Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to assign properties to structural geometry in RAM Elements Connect Edition. In this video, we're going to be focusing on assigning descriptions to the structural members in our model to make selection and evaluation of results easier. Now in this first exercise, we're going to show you how to assign descriptions to members in RAM Elements. Now by grouping members with a common description, several different options can be achieved. The first is for selection. So members with the same description will facilitate easier selections, which might help with the exercises yet to come in this training course. The next advantage is for reporting. Results can be grouped for members based on their assigned descriptions, which might make it easier to organize your reports or also print the information that you want most. Finally, for optimization. Optimization and verification assigns the same section to all elements with the same description. So we'll also have to think of that as we move towards our design modules. To assign a description in RAM elements, you're going to go to your data panel, select your members tab, and then click on your nodes and description icon. Now this is also where members are created and you're going to see the first field here available is our description field. So what we're going to do is we're going to think about grouping different members together and assigning the same section properties to those members. Now to make this a little easier, we may want to change our view occasionally and work with several different selection tools. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to view a front elevation of the structure. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to select a front X Y icon. That's going to show me a front elevation. Now to zoom in and out, I can just use my middle mouse wheel and go forward or backwards depending upon if I want my image to get larger or smaller. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unselect everything on my screen. And then what I want to do is I want to select the first floor columns. Now what I can do is I can hold down my control key and I can draw a fence just through the first floor columns. And if I took a look at it by the side, I can see that it's going to select everything that's within that fence. And that includes the 3D structure as it goes backwards. Now, once I have the columns selected, then I'm going to assign a description. Now I can manually enter a description in the data panel, or I also do have a description icon available in my active spreadsheet tools. So here, if I want to select from the assign description option, I can go ahead and select one of these and it'll go ahead and assign it for me to all of the currently selected members. So I'm going to go ahead and select the column option and you can see it's going to assign column one to each of those members. I'm going to go ahead and unselect those and let's go ahead and repeat this process for our girders in my model. Again, I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to draw a fence through the girder. I'm going to be sure not to select these beams, which are attached to these nodes that we can also see on our screen. Now, remember that the control key when drawing a fence will basically select any members that cross that fence during the selection. So I have three members selected. I'm going to go back to my description tool. And this time I'm going to go ahead and say, assign the beam description to those. Now let's go ahead and repeat this process. I'm going to hold down my control key again. I'm going to select actually control and shift and I'm going to select my top cord members. Now as these are selected, I'm going to go up and use my selection tools at this point because I only selected those members at the peak. These are all segmented. I want to select those as well. So if I go up to my selection tools, I'm going to find the tool to say select continuous member, which basically it's going to identify the member that's selected and then select all the members that are basically in line with it. So I went ahead and did that. And this time I'm going to manually assign a description. I'm going to call this top cord. So to do that, I'm just going to write my description in the first field. And then what I want to do is I want to apply it all the way down. I don't want to have to repeat my writing. So I'm going to come up to my spreadsheet tools and I'm going to find this tool. This is going to fill the current column with the value at the cursor location. So my cursor is in this top field. I'm going to click this icon. It's going to assign top cord to everything. 
Now, if I look at the tool adjacent to that, that's going to copy the row at the cursor location, which means basically every row here will be copied down, which is not what I want to do for this command. Let's go ahead and repeat this process for some other members. I'm going to hold down my control key. I'm going to select my bottom cord. And for this one, I'll go ahead and type this as bottom cord. And I'm going to go ahead and grab some diagonal members. Now, again, this could be done with control and shift. And finally, my vertical members, again, holding down control and shift. Now, once I'm done with that, let me go ahead and take a different view because I still have members along the other sides that I want to consider. So I'm going to right click in my display area and this time I'm going to select the front YZ icon. This will show me an elevation view basically of the other side of the structure. Again, I'm going to hold down my control key. I'm going to draw a fence through my braces. I'm going to come up here to my active spreadsheet tool and this time I'm going to call it brace additive. It's going to go ahead and give it a brace one description. And then we're going to complete that process for the rest of the members that we have. We are going to have some beams and a couple of truss members. And you're going to notice that we had already specified some columns, so it's going to automatically go to column two when we use that command again. If you want to zoom in, which might make it a little easier, you can also do that again with your mouse wheel. Okay. That should be everything. Let's go ahead and zoom on out. And if we go ahead to our spreadsheet tools and click the select all elements icon, we can also scroll down in our data panel and just to see if we missed anything. Now while doing this process, we do see that we did forget to assign descriptions to a few members. I can see member 94 here, member 100. I can keep going down and finding more. So let's go ahead and try to troubleshoot where we missed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unselect my entire model. Now I know that member 94 was one of the members and I'm kind of thinking that most of the members that we missed were part of the same group. So I'm going to go ahead and if you unselect everything, you can type your member number in here and it'll go ahead and select it on your screen. So let's go ahead and type in member 94. We'll hit enter. Okay, now we can see very clearly that some of our bottom cord members. So let's go ahead and do control and shift. I'm going to select all of my bottom cord members. Okay, and I'm seeing that all of those are the ones that are missing. So let's go ahead and call them bottom cord. Again, we're going to fill down and I'm going to do one more final check to see if I've missed anything. Everything has a description. So everything is looking pretty good. Now, as we mentioned earlier, one of your major advantages is for making selection processes, processes easier uh, when you assign a description. So say, for example, I want to select all of my BEAM members, my BEAM2 members. All I have to do is select one of them, any one of them, and then I'm going to come up within my selection tools and I'm going to select this icon here. This is your by description icon. 
everything that was assigned a description of beam two will automatically be selected. Now, in addition to assigning a description and your node connectivity in this area of the program, you're also going to notice that we have several other additional fields available. The first field we're going to talk about is a tributary width field. Now, this variable is used to calculate the tributary loads due to pressure in the y direction. This option is mainly used for joists or intermediate beams. The next option is the brace flag. This flag is used to determine if the member will be treated as a brace for the connection design. This flag enables the program to distinguish between sloped beams and braces. It has no influence on the analysis or the design of the members. The last field we're going to take a look at is the cantilever field. Now this flag is used to determine if the deflection calculation of the member uses the cantilever method. Cantilever method considers that the maximum deflection is in the member end. Otherwise, it considers the maximum deflection in the member span. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.